Hello guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to derive sine A minus B equals sine A cos B minus cos A sine B from absolute scratch using a new geometrical proof. Alright, now before I begin proving to you that this is the case, we need to look at this diagram over here very, very carefully. First of all, let's start off at the origin. At this origin, there are two angles, okay? B and also A minus B. However, when you add up these two angles, what you will get is A. This has been proven over here. You need to know this. Also, the length from O to S is exactly equal to 1, okay? Very important. And at this point P, we have a 90 degree angle, okay? This is also very, very important. You can see this when this diagram is flipped, all right? Now, there is also a 90 degree angle over here, one over here, and one over here, okay? What we also have is the points Q, R, S, and T. The length Q, R, is exactly the same as the length ST. Very, very important as well. Now, finally, we've got the angle alpha over here. Because this is an opposite angle, it's the same as alpha. We've got the angle beta over here. And because this is an opposite angle, it's also beta. Okay? So this is the important stuff about this diagram in a nutshell. Okay, now to produce this proof, we must take seven steps, okay? The first step is finding an expression for this angle alpha, okay? Now, it turns out we have a right angle over here, all right, which is 90 degrees. So, in this small right angle triangle over here, what is left is 90 degrees, okay? So, angle alpha over here must be equal to 90 degrees minus A minus B in brackets, okay? So, we are going to write this down right now. Angle alpha is equal to 90 degrees minus A minus B in brackets, okay? And this is going to be equal to 90 degrees minus A plus B, okay? So we've taken the first step in proving that this is true. All right, now that we've taken the first step, we are going to take the second step. We must find an expression for the angle beta. To find this expression, we are going to say that alpha plus beta is equal to 180 degrees. Okay, let's do this. Alpha plus beta is 180 degrees. Now, this will mean that beta, okay, is equal to 180 degrees minus alpha. However, we've got an expression for alpha. That is 90 degrees minus A plus B. Therefore, beta is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus in brackets, 90 degrees minus A plus B, okay? And this is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus 90 degrees plus A minus B, okay? 
and this translates into 90 degrees plus A minus B, okay? And this is the expression for beta. Okay, so we've taken steps one and two. Now it's time to take step number three. We must find angle 180 degrees minus B minus beta. What is this angle though? Well, it turns out that it's the smaller angle at point P, okay? Because in all triangles, you get 180 degrees. This means that this small angle up here must be 180 degrees minus B minus beta, okay? So this angle, smaller angle up here, is actually this, all right? So let's find out what this actually is because we already have an expression for beta, which is this right over here. So, 180 degrees minus B, okay, minus beta is going to be equal to 180 degrees minus B minus, in brackets, 90 degrees plus A minus B, okay? Because this over here in brackets is the expression for beta. Now this turns out to be 180 degrees minus B minus 90 degrees minus A plus B, okay? And simplified further, you get 90 degrees minus A, okay? Because this minus B over here and this plus B over here cancel each other out. 180 degrees minus 90 degrees is 90 degrees and we've also got minus A, okay? So this over here is the angle, small angle up here and we've taken step three. All right, so you're probably wondering why you had to take steps one, two, and three. Well, we had to take these steps to find this small angle right over here, okay? And it turns out that this angle is A, okay? And this is going to be very important when we're proving this. Now this is A, okay, because this entire angle up here at point P is 90 degrees. If this is 90 degrees minus A, then this has to be A. Okay, now that we've taken steps one, two, and three, we can now take step four. That is finding sine A minus B. Well, it turns out that sine A minus B is going to be equal to opposite over hypotenuse. But what is this opposite and what is this hypotenuse? Well, because the angle A minus B is over here, its opposite is going to be ST and its hypotenuse is going to be OS, which is equal to one. So sine A minus B is in fact ST over one, okay? And this is ST. Now, in order to prove this up here, we need to find out more information about ST. It turns out that ST is going to be equal to PR, which is this length, minus PQ. And this is because the length QR is the same as ST. So once again, ST is going to be equal to the length PR minus PQ. So let's write this down. ST equals PR minus PQ. Okay? Okay, so we've discovered that ST equals PR minus PQ. At the moment, we don't have to worry about what PR is or PQ to complete this proof. We must take step number five first. 
And then step number six. Now step five is finding sine B and cos B. It turns out that sine B is opposite over hypotenuse and cos B is adjacent over hypotenuse. Now this angle B which we're going to use is this angle over here, okay? And to use it effectively, we have to flip this diagram around, okay? So, if we have sine B and sine B is opposite over hypotenuse, okay? Sine B is going to be equal to PS, which is this opposite length, divided by the hypotenuse 1, okay? So it turns out that sine B is in fact PS. And we're going to put this over here, okay? Sine B is PS. Now, what is cos B? Cos B is adjacent over hypotenuse, okay? The adjacent of this right angled triangle is OP. Its hypotenuse is equal to 1. This means that cos B is going to be equal to OP, okay? And we are going to write this down on this diagram. Cos B, okay, is going to be equal to OP. So we've taken step number five. Okay, so we've taken steps one to five. Now we're going to take step number six, okay? And in step number six, we're going to discover what PR and PQ is, which will help us complete this proof over here. Now step six is to find sine A and also cos A. Sine A is opposite over hypotenuse as normal and cos A equals adjacent over hypotenuse as normal. Now this angle A over here is going to be B plus A minus B, which is angle A, okay? And it's going to be part of the right angle triangle OPR. Now the opposite side of this right angle triangle is PR. Its hypotenuse is cos B. So this means that sine A is PR over cos B, okay? Now, if we multiply both sides of this equation by cos B, what we discover is that PR is equal to sine A, okay, times cos B, all right? That's what we discover. So let's move on to cos A. This angle A, okay, is going to be this angle over here. And it's going to be part of the triangle PQS, which is a right angled triangle. Now its adjacent side is PQ and its hypotenuse is sine B. So this means that cos A is going to be equal to PQ over sine B, all right? Now, if we multiply both sides of this equation by sine B, what we discover is that PQ is in fact equal to cos A times sine B, all right? And this is very, very important because we need to know what PR and PQ is to get ST and to prove that this is the case. And we did discover what PR and PQ is. So we're ready to move on to step seven and prove that this is the case. Okay, so we're now at the stage you've been waiting for, proving that sine A minus B equals sine A times cos B minus cos A times sine B. We're going to prove this using ST equals PR minus PQ. We know what ST is, it's sine A minus B. We know what PR is, sine A times cos B. 
and we know what PQ is, cos A times sine B. So let's complete the proof. ST is equal to PR minus PQ. We know that ST is sine A minus B, okay? And this is going to be equal to PR, which is sine A times cos B. minus PQ, which is cos A times sine B. Okay, so we've proven that sine A minus B equals sine A times cos B minus cos A times sine B. Now, if you have any questions, please leave your comments below. I hope you enjoyed watching this video.